gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. I know it's been a while. Uh, tonight's little video will be a tool review and teardown of this little uh, pneumatic angle grinder. I uh, bought it at the, our local supplies. It's branded Macafric, which I presume is probably the equivalent of you guys in the States is Saba Freight or something like that. Uh, offshore, let's see. Uh, there we go, made in Taiwan. Uh, offshore brand. They'll brand this whatever you want it to be uh, i think that, that's the way we go with it uh, but let's get right into it i'm going to uh, tear it down i've been using it a bit but uh and i'll i think let's let's go through all the motions there's there's good and bad about this one first of all the specification let's just see here 10,000 rpm at 6 to 8 cfm uh operating pressure of 6.3 bar 90 psi Air inlets a quarter inch BSP, and then the recommended air hose is a 10 millimeter. I'm running it off, uh, I think, an eight. I think I'm running, no, I think I'm running a six or something. But nevertheless, uh, the problem with this is the air consumption versus your compressor's consumption. Uh, when buying a compressor, always, always, well, well, you probably in your life buy three compressors. First, you'll start, start off with a small one. Then you see you're not getting anywhere, then you go for one bigger, and then you see you're still not there, and then you buy the biggest one you can get. You Well, the biggest one that can fit in your shop. Uh, the problem with that being is the rating on the compressor, let's say your compressor is rated for 6 CFM. I think mine is something like 8 or 12, can't remember. That 8 or 12 CFM is at standard atmosphere. If you then take 6.3 bar times 6 CFM. Uh, it's probably in the vicinity of, well, between those two. You're probably going to need a 40 CFM. Uh, CFM compressor to continuously drive this tool. So, yes, you probably run out of air somewhere along the line. Uh, hey, check out the video on AVE. He did a, a good video on this. Ne nevertheless, uh, I haven't been grinding with this thing days and days on end. And it seems to be f working fairly well. Uh, other than that, not bad, not bad packaging. Normal little box type packaging. Smells like uh, came from somewhere offshore. Add a little uh, pamphlet in with spare parts and all of that. But let's uh, let's leave that at that. Uh, in your package, you will get the two little, well, the little 14 millimeter press steel wrench. Uh, to fit on the back and then they've got a sort of a face spanner dog leg face spanner that will fit on there and then you strip it <coughs> off um, that's the first negative it hasn't got the uh what do you call it the locking mechanism the little locking button it's it's called something uh pop me down below uh it hasn't got that on so and i bet you this is going to get lost somewhere and the space in between is so narrow that you will not get a normal size wrench in there so uh, i don't know how this is going to go but we'll see as we go along we probably somewhere in the next couple of years we'll be making another one of these but let's get it stripped down While we, uh, and, 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 and we've already said the one negative with not having the uh, spindle lock. Spindle lock, there we go. It's a spindle lock. So it doesn't have the little spindle lock uh, button there. The, well, but that we can sort of live with that. My major, m biggest beef with this piece of kit is they did not put a standard size thread on there. So if you now want to put something on the, uh, on there like this uh, little cup brush it doesn't fit guys come on i mean why 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 do you do stuff like that for the life of me i cannot get it um but yeah that 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 is the worst part of this little grind uh, other than that it takes the standard what's it 22 millimeter uh inserts so the normal grinding discs fits 100 percent on there you just can't screw on a cup brush on there so that, keep that in mind if you're looking at buying something like that maybe somewhere along the line when we pick up a lathe or whatever the case may be i'll i'll 
remachine the old little shaft and uh, make it work to the normal stuff. Let's get uh, further into it. These little uh, screws are torque screw. I think it's a T20. Does it make sense? I think there's a little T20 on here. Um, uh, just a little T-handle. I had a extension that was hammered on. Cheap. And uh, I decided it couldn't fit the half inch square anymore. So I just welded on a handle. While we're at this point. Uh, it comes shipped to you, well, the little handle comes off, and I think once I've got that off, it comes shipped to you with the blade guard in the square position. Now, maybe if you've got a friend that you picked up uh, on a merchant marine vessel that weighs 45 kilograms or something like that, uh, 60 pounds or whatever, they can hold it like that, but it just doesn't make sense, it doesn't feel right. You're gonna, So now you're going to twist it a little bit like you normally would, and you've only got that little piece to work in. This is going to get in the way. Uh, I'll show you what I did to alleviate that once we put it back together again. But come on, guys. Uh, it's small little manufacturing things like this that can go a super long way. Next up, we've got this little bearing retainer plate. Uh, just uh, stamped pressed steel. Nothing, nothing major. Keeps in the bearing. It's a, uh, it's uh, what's the bearing size? 6202. ZZ bearing, so it's a double uh, steel seal bearing. Out of diameters, looks like a 35, 35, and I can't see the OD. I think there's a lip on there. Uh, we can go and look up the uh, bearing size on it. Beefy, nice beefy bearing. Nothing small about it. Uh, I think this will hold up fairly well to hard use. The casting is. Uh, some other aluminum casting, alloy casting, uh, doesn't look bad. Looks fairly beefy. Uh, I think I'm, I'm impressed so far. I'm really impressed so far. Let's get into the rest of it. Okay, so all fasteners on this thing is a uh, different size. This is a 3mm X key. That one's like, uh, I think it's a 2.5 or a 2. Uh, probably 2.5. I think this is a 3, yes. And the rest is torque, so all metric, but uh, none, none of them are the same. Just, just check out. Uh, guys, when you're taking stuff apart, look for small things like that. You'll see this edge is higher than this one, so uh, <laughs> they actually put in a little longer screw. So when you're putting it back together, that you don't make a hash of it. Um, it's all about a cost of manufacture, I guess. Okay, so if we pull this apart... There we go. Uh, the gearbox head. Oh, nice little paper gasket. Let me just get it back here. Get all the grime and stuff off it. I don't want to lose this one. Okay, so we've got a nice little paper gasket. The rest, in this little gearbox, 90 degree gearbox, some decent stuff in here. First of all, we've got some beefy bearings. On the inside, there's, there's another one on this point. Uh, I think this little point here is how you press the whole thing out should you want to replace the something on there. Um, the pinion bearing looks like it's looks like it's sintered metal. Nicely cut. I don't see some weird any weird faces on there. Let's maybe put some. Let's get it cleaned up a little bit. Does not look too bad. We we'll see how long it lasts. I don't know how hard this is. Uh, let's get a file and feel. It does mark it, so it's not that hard. Um, we'll see how long it lasts. The gearbox, once again, nice beefy bearings. Uh, uh, the machining, well, the casting and the machining on this is not that bad. Um, really, really not. Too, uh, it could have been worse. It could have been a lot worse. I, I must be honest, I was expecting a lot worse. Uh, if, well, maybe if I can... The casting's really not bad and then machine to, to a final surface. Now I'll be honest, this is a second kick at the cat. Uh, I took it apart before I started using it. And I saw that there was no grease in here. And uh, I chucked this whole thing full of grease. Uh, not realizing what I was doing. Uh, got it back together 
and uh, the first time I depressed the trigger it spat out high pressure grease at uh, 10,000 RPM uh, still cleaning shop but that was my 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 issue uh, well my mistake my mistake thought I was wrong I was mistaken uh, so what happens is the oil that you use on this actually gets blown through into the gearbox um, grease does not last in here it blows it out through the bearing bearing so make sure that this is one of those tools I think that you'll have to keep oiled the die grinders you can run without oil uh, uh, no problem but this one you're gonna have to keep oiled um, that getting to that on pneumatic tools on the first time using them chuck in a lot of grease, uh, oil in there the first time around it just lubricates everything up nicely and make sure that everything's there and uh, I think it'll it'll definitely lengthen your tool life now let's get to the uh, actual rotor side of it as you can see that's where it blows the oil through let's pull this apart there we go we'll get to the rotor just now so once again uh, Aluminium casting, some other aluminium alloy casting. Not bad. Yeah. Casting looks good and then machining doesn't look that bad either. Let's chuck in some a bit of a, get it cleaned up a bit. You can see inside there. We'll oil it again. Alright, so uh, I don't know if you can guys can see in there. You've got your air coming in through your valve assembly. We'll check what's inside there just now. And then over the in there there's a little seat there. There we go, somewhere there. And there. There's a little seat there. So what will happen is you've got your rotor assembly. Uh, air intakes on that side. Go through the rotor, comes out on the exhaust ports. Uh, chucks everything out front. Uh, some of it goes into the gear assembly. The rest of it goes bypasses into the exhaust port. Into the exhaust port sitting there. Not bad. I am pleasantly surprised, I must be honest with you. I expected much worse. The rotor assembly, uh, I think you're going to have to use a puller and get to get all of this apart. I don't think I'm going to do that now. I don't want to make a hash of it and, and not be able to use it. Let's see. There you can see the little rotor sitting on there. So they just expand uh, as as the air comes flows through. And uh, that's how you get the 10,000 RPM out of it. Uh, we'll test the, the the speed. Don't you don't you worry. We we will we will definitely test it. Uh, I'm not going to pull this apart. Once again, nice big bearings. Uh, I expected much worse. This is actually n not that bad. It's coming out to be a seems to be a very decent tool for the price you pay. In any case, uh, it should not matter how you put this whole thing together. But we will get to that uh, just now. Now, once again, a different fastener. Uh, I think this is going to be a six. Yeah, there we go. It's all right. Ooh. We've got a little plastic seal, uh, nitrile rubber, on there. A little spring on it with a little piston, and that little piston. How this works is the handle presses the piston in and the piston seats on that edge there it's also a nitrile rubber um, and then releases it and that's that that's the extent of how this whole thing works am i correct now Yeah. This one seals on the outer edge of the. Yeah, let me show you. This little o ring seats on the outer edge of the casing. So, what happens is, and this one, this little uh, wedge, seats on the inside casing. So, what happens is, the moment you depress the trigger, the whole little. Uh, 
pop it goes out the air comes through uh, well th this side of the spring will always be pressurized uh, it releases past there and into the intake well intake gallery of of the two and then it goes through the intake port on there and and that's basically how it works uh, I think let's get it back together before I lose something I honestly don't want to not be able to use this thing nice simple easy uh, no nothing there's nothing intelligent about it all of this technology is like donkey years old and, and that's what I like about it uh, the lever is a stamped metal um, part uh, metal pin I think that's normally that's where the shit hits the fan is between the tool and the operator uh, 200 pound gorilla on the end of it uh, but this seems fairly skookum I think that it's much better than some of the plastic on, on, on much more expensive cordless tools I think this can actually last quite a while not bad I am I'm impressed so far let's get it back together uh, and I will let's wrap this up and see how it works uh, gasket 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 Forgot to put back the little paper gasket. Okay, so what I did was initially it was like that. Uh, with this blade guard squared to the grinder. So what I did was I just marked out two holes. And uh, moved it up as far as I could. In this sense. Uh, let me put it together and I'll show you. Alright, uh, got it up to the air. Let's do a little speed test. Uh, sticked on a little bit of reflective tape on here. My compressor just kicked out. It is a, well the compressor's got a 100 litre tank. It uh, It's standing about, at, let's make sure, 100 psi? Yeah, 110 psi currently. Got the regulator full open. And it will kick in just around about 80 psi. It'll come back on again. Uh, so let's check the speed on this thing. And see if it gets to the 10,000 PSI. Ah, 10,000 RPMs. We will also see as the pressure goes down how the speed reduces on this thing. This thing is air hungry, so make sure that you have a serious compressor if you want to uh, use this type of air tool. Oh, let's see. Right, so as you saw there, it didn't quite make the 10,000 RPM. It looks like about 7.5 if you've got enough air for it, which is much, much lower than the uh, normal 11,000 RPM on the uh, rat tail grinders. Uh, maybe we should test that in a future video. Let me know in the little thing below if, we, if you'd like me to do a, a comparison on them. Uh, there's a little grind that you saw me do. It works well. I'm, I'm fairly happy with it. For the price that I paid, I think it's probably the equivalent of about 40 US dollars that I paid for it. I'm not sure. Uh, I'll go and check and just pop it in the screen. For the price, I think it is well worth the money, considering you have to have a big compressor for it. The last thing, do you see how I turned the blade guard? So it's, it, it opened up, up uh, uh, basically that amount of workspace. It works much easier now. Uh, feels like it's my tool now. Right to wrap this up, pros, uh, this little grinder, weight is good, handles good, uh, once you've turned the blade guard, nice ergonomic, 
I really enjoy working with this thing. Um, really enjoy working with it. It's stout built, good, big, beefy bearings, big, beefy shafts in there. I, good machining. All, all in all, the build quality is much better than uh, I anticipated. Uh, cons, air hungry, but all of these are. Uh, you will probably, from a any size DIY compressor, you will not get enough air from uh, to run these tools unless you have a big workshop. That if you've got a big big compressor, you need a, a boatload of air to run these. But I must be honest with you, uh, my compressor is three horsepower, I think six or eight CFM, and by not continuously, if I'm not continuously using it. Um, it tends to sort of hold up, so I can't really complain. I think it was worth the money on my side. Um, oh, that being said, I did not get paid to do this. Uh, I forked out the money out of my own pocket, and I thought I'd tell you guys what I think of it. Another con, it hasn't got the spindle lock button. So I don't know how long it's going to be before you chuck this away. Uh, I'd like a little spindle lock of some sort. The handle, because of the exhaust port sitting on the right-hand side, it's only made for right-hand people. If you're a lefty, you're going to battle. So that's that's one con. If you're left-handed, you're going to struggle a bit. Other than that, guys, I think it's worthwhile. Do not uh, think about this if you've got a small compressor, though. Uh, it will not work for you. But with that, I'm going to call it. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any comments, please drop them down below. Uh, please uh, subscribe and ring the little bell so you don't miss out on future videos. And with that, I'm going to say thank you very much, everyone. And uh, as always, stay safe.